when I was a young man, I was greatly influenced by my oldest brother, uh, who's now deceased, uh, Sheikh Omar Ahmed, uh, who was involved in the civil rights movement, was involved in the black power movement, and got us involved at a young age. And uh, so almost 50 years now, I've been doing this kind of work. I had the pleasure of um, being a Peace Corps volunteer in the West African country of Mali, wow. where I spent three years in a French-speaking country working on development. So I got a chance to um, bathe myself in the richness of the African culture. Yes. And one of the great things about Mali is that you have the, the remnants of the ancient uh, Malian Empire led by uh, Timbuktu, the spiritual mysteries of the Dogon people, the greatness of the Bamara people, the uh, greatness of um, all of those warriors that made that civilization a great civilization. I was able to bathe in all of that and just get another kind of appreciation for what development in the uh, developing world is like. And it's no different than the development in North St. Louis. It's the same thing. The only difference is that in Mali and in, throughout Africa, they have a strong sense of family yes. and a strong sense of culture. Yes. So when we were doing this uh, uh, initial piece, I think I said that it started with the cultural and historical roots. Uh, yeah. We said that if we can get that same sense of family and culture and blend that with the activism of the civil rights and black power movement, we can do something quite unique. Yes. And that came out to be better family life. Yes. Wow. Activism. You know I was yeah. coming to activism yes. Yes. because uh, I see the passion yes. as soon as the word comes out of your mouth. Yes. It's like this need that that's where we go back to. Exactly. We have to go back there. What was it about that period of activism that it, we need now? It's the involvement of young people. Ah, yeah. Young people were the heart and soul of the civil rights movement. Yes. Without young people, Selma would not have been possible. Right. Without young people, the great successes that um, Martin Luther King and the SCLC and Core and SNCC yes. achieved in the South would not have been possible. So activism has to take place among young people. One of the great things about the revolt in Ferguson, Missouri, is that you saw young people of all shades and dimensions come out and be on the front lines of that and uh, their fearlessness um, to confront the militaristic um, uh, police departments that assemble to deny them their constitutional right to protest, uh, deny their constitutional rights to engage in civil disobedience those young people made a statement to the world. So I am so proud of the young people of St. Louis to show that the movement is alive, that they are aware of the issues, they are aware that they are in history, and that they are making uh, history by challenging the powers that be, challenging um, the justice system, yes. challenging um, the political system, they are the heart and soul of what I dream about every day, to see young people out there talking about they know they are the future leaders of not only America but the world, and that the actions that they take today is going to help shape the world that they're going to live in tomorrow and yeah. years to come. Yes, yes, uh, they get a lot of slack and flack for their approach. Yeah, and, and you know, as young people, that all of their approaches aren't going to be right. But what is more important is that they are willing to put a, an approach out there yes. for consideration. Yes. And so in the, the dialogue about that approach, some things they will learn, some things they will hold fast to, and you will have a new synthesis of their understanding. With that new synthesis of their understanding, that's what creates a more progressive world. That's exactly. Exactly. So instead of picking apart what we're doing right or wrong, 
just get behind the fact that they're running out there fearlessly, as you said, right. and taking a stand. That's right. Regardless of how you take it, how That's you right. view it, if it's right or wrong, or even if I live beyond this moment. Exactly. And just let, let's just even reflect on the image that young African Americans in particular have had. Young people accused of being criminal, yeah. drug uh, sellers, drug us users, abusers of women, um, I'm not concerned with school, all of the, the ones that commit the most crimes, they have been given a black eye on everything. Yeah. Now here you got a group of young people that is talking about social justice, yes. is talking about uh, um, putting a halt to the exploits of the police department, um, being able to, to articulate um, um, their uh, being abused by police powers in their everyday life, um, talking about voter registration and getting young people to actively engage in politics and, and elections and to run candidates. So what these young people, especially those young people in Ferguson have done, they have changed the narrative yes. about what young people ought to be about. Yes. And in changing that narrative, yes, certainly it has frightened some people because, you know, it's a burst of energy. It's a, a burst of energy that's been pent up for the last 30 or 40 and years. And it's in your face. And it's in and your not face. going away. And it's not going to go away. So we have got to accommodate young people. As the head of Better Family Life, I have the same responsibility because they may look at me and see a shirt and tie on and say, oh man, you're part of the yeah, establishment. Yeah. I got to let them know, no, this is just my little uniform that I'm wearing to do a particular job, but I'm down with where you're down. But now I got, as you got to take and sensitize me to your reality, I have to also sensitize you to my reality. Yes, exactly. So we got both a lot of uh, learning to do, do and adjusting to do. We do. Moving forward, uh, what are your thoughts about Ferguson, you know, and moving beyond that and healing from that, but at the same time, keeping that fire? Um, first of all, I'm, I'm happy that um, the situation erupted as it did in Ferguson. Uh, certainly, you don't want to see innocent store owners lose their property and right. be vandalized and looted and um, the, the shops burnt down and all the rest of that stuff. Notwithstanding that, and that's always a little small group of people that's doing that. What the majority of those young people are calling for is social justice. Yes. They're, they're calling for fairness for the family of Mike Brown, who they feel, and I feel, have been unjustly murdered. Um, um, they, and um, they are asking and we are asking in the larger African American community and people of conscience as, are asking for justice and we deserve justice. Um, the, the other thing that we have to constantly say about Ferguson is that Ferguson is not ground zero. North St. Louis is ground zero. North St. Louis, the east side, uh, is where the development has to take place. The cancer that has been created that some people call rage and other kinds of things that's not appropriate for society, um, that has come about as a result, as I said earlier, of about 50 to 60 years of disinvestment. And we've got to invest in the infrastructures of uh, uh, inner city communities. We've got to uh, put real employment uh, opportunities yeah. before them that they can work in their community. So there's a whole rebuilding that has to uh, take place. It should not start in Ferguson. It should start in North St. Louis. In fact, Better Family Life is proposing that it starts right here on Page on Boulevard. Page. Right where you're located. Right where we're located. That's right in the, the heart. I mean, we look out your beautiful office window and we see Abandoned buildings. Yes. We see areas in need of massive help. And that's where these corporate entities and foundations and philanthropic ent entities should be investing their money. My last question. This is a phenomenal conversation. I hate for it to end. Mm -hmm. But uh, Better Family Life, how are you going to continue 
your leadership role into the future? I'm hoping that Better Family Life will build a strong membership base that is 1,000 to 2,000 strong that could really take up the task of self-sufficiency as we serve these communities. We cannot always rely on others to fund our initiatives. A membership base can fund 90% of what Better Family Life wants. We could raise millions of dollars with a voluntary membership base committed to rebuilding the community. In addition to that, we hope to continue to expand programmatically to seek partners in the uh, public sector uh, arena, the private sector arena, that's committed to rebuilding inner city and outer ring suburban communities. And if we do a good job here in the St. Louis metropolitan community, I hope to see better family life expanded to every major city in America and then eventually uh, spread to other parts of the developing world. Because as I said earlier, everybody needs a better family life and everybody wants a better family life. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine another BFL in uh, every state serving 50,000 people at least? The I, impact that that would yes. have. I, I can't imagine it. Wow. And that's what keeps me going every day is that, that with that faith uh, and that vision that we can transform America. America needs transforming. Mm -hmm. African Americans have always been the catalyst, has always historically been the catalyst for America's transformation. Even if you go back to the dark days of the enslavement era, it was our demand for human rights. It was our demands for being treated fair and equitable um, that caused America to grow its moral conscience that uh, benefited women, benefited children, benefited uh, other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then you, if you just fast forward that, it was um, the African Americans' involvement in the civil rights, I mean, in the Civil War that led to the Union victory. Yep. It was the African Americans' vic uh, uh, involvement in World War II that led yep. to the defeat of Germany. Yep. It was African Americans' involvement in the civil rights movement that led to all these other movements, uh, Medicare, health care, uh, child labor, educational reform, um, um, being able to look out for the disabled, et cetera. All of that came out of the African American struggle for equality. So African Americans are essential to this country's uh, stability and this country's future. The sooner the broader uh, American community recognizes that and embrace that, the better off we would be as a the nation. The better, the better. Well, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your wisdom and your insight and your experience. Uh, a lot of people needed to meet the man behind the mission and I think that they have. Thank you very much. So it was my pleasure to, uh, to sit here with you and learn from you today. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very you. much. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.